Hey guys, in this video, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create some sort of a cloth uh, simulation here in ZBrush. So um, I'm pretty sure this is the latest version as of today, 2022, on September 11th, uh, 2022. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to my light box. And I'm just going to double click on this Dyna, DynaWax uh, sphere. And now I just want to do a click. Uh, a quick little simulation of a cloth just for fun. So how do we do it? Um, well, I'm going to go to sub tools and I'm going to append or create a uh, plane. And now I'm going to rotate the plane by holding down the shift key. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm obviously in the right layer. So I'm going to hold on the shift key and just rotate it uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to move it up and scale this up a little bit. So this essentially is going to be my cloth, right? Now, um, how do I make it to act uh, like a, you know, a simulated cloth? Well, to do that, I need to go to uh, Dynamics. And if you go to Dynamics, you can uh, grab this guy and drag it on your uh, left panel here, um, if you want. So that's what I did. You can double click to open these and drag whatever you want uh, on here. So here's my Dynamics uh, toolbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything as is. I believe I didn't change anything yet. And as of right now, uh, if I drag it, nothing uh, happens. I'm just going to do Control Z to undo. And uh, one thing I uh, could do is I can run the simulation. So let's go ahead and try to run the simulation and it's running really fast. I'm going to do control Z. Um, let's go ahead and slow this down. Maybe gravity is a little too strong. So instead of 10, uh, how about we just do like, I don't know, three, try to run this again. It's going right through. Um, I'm going to turn on my collision volume and I'm going to click, uh, recalculate. And let's try this again. There you go. Now you can see that it's actually uh, sort of bending. Now, if I press, uh, let's turn our dynamics on. So not dynamics, the, the um, what am I thinking? Uh, the dynamic, yeah, dynamic subdivision. So I'm going to turn on this button here, and that's going to give me a preview of a smooth plane. Now you can see that this plane doesn't have the bottom, right? Because it's just one sided. So uh, there's a couple things you could do. Uh, one, you could go to display properties and turn double on. That's one thing you could do. If you want to keep it single uh, plane um, and you don't want to double up your geometry. If you don't uh, mind and you want some thickness, then of course you can go to geometry and there's a thickness slider. So you can actually turn this way up. And you can see how it's actually giving us nice thickness. We can almost have like a, almost like a mattress kind of thing, which is kind of interesting. But um, in my case, I don't really think I even need that. I'm just going to go for something simple, uh, just a single plane, right? Now, this is, this is really cool, but it feels like uh, you have to press stop really quick to catch it to where you want it to be. Um, would be fun if we could actually, let's do control Z a bunch of times. I, I actually want to go back up. I'm going to turn this dynamics on, but, um, would be fun if we could actually can control this in some better way than just falling to, uh, gravity. So there is a way, um, you could go to your brushes and you can choose something called transpose cloth. Now, if you click on that, you can see the gizmo. And the cool thing about this, I don't know if I have to recalculate or not. I'm just going to press it anyways. But um, now if you drag the gizmo while selecting, while your uh, cloth brush is selected or transpose cloth, you can actually in real time drag this down and control, have a lot more control over how this is uh, looking which is really cool, right? And you can actually even drag it 
to different sides and maybe create different shapes of your claw. Uh, once you're done, let's say let's say you want to bring this into like a game engine as as a actual mesh instead of this dynamic uh, cloth. Uh, what you want to do is you want to turn off your collision volume so it no longer um, interacts with the sphere. So if I turn the sphere off, you can see it's just and my display got turned off. It's just a cloth by itself. And now if I move it around, it's not interacting with anything, right? Which is cool. I guess it is interacting with the floor still. So uh, we could turn off the floor collision off also. And now it's just the cloth. And now of course, the next thing would be go to like geometry and just simply uh, let's apply our dynamics and I do have three levels right so this is pretty low a thousand points and this is dialed up a little more if for some reason you know you didn't have different levels you can uh, let's delete the lower and let's assume we don't have a lower level then you could just Z remesh it so in geometry, uh, just go to zero remesher. Let's set target to like a thousand and let's just do a zero remesh. And here you go. So you have, uh, this would be your kind of a game, um, game topology. Maybe you want to reduce it a little more. I'm going to turn off ad adapting, uh, adapt button. What that's going to do is you could see towards the edges, it's kind of bunching up the geometry. It's trying to maintain the shape. But if you turn the adapt off, it will try to spread the uh, grid a little more evenly, which might be better looking for like a game game model. So I'm gonna do that. And you can see how the geometry is actually, um, the topology, it looks like it's a little more even. So this would be like a low poly version of the cloth, uh, you know. You can, of course, um, subdivide it if you wanted to sculpt further on it. Now you can grab any uh, any one of these tools and just start sculpting. Like if I go to standard brush, you know, it's just, it's just a, um, it turns into a, a sculptable uh, mesh, right? So this is really cool and a powerful way to kind of combine your uh, workflow and create something very specific. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.